the woods are the perfect hiding place for just about everything. That's why they feature so often in fairy tales, and it's also why your parents always told you never to walk through them alone at night. You never know what you might find when you go for a walk through a forest, but it's a truly special day when you find something as incredible as the forest discoveries you're about to see in this video. The stone sphere that was found in a forest in Bosnia in 2016 is absolutely enormous. Everybody can see that and everybody agrees with it. What's harder to get agreement on is the question of whether or not the sphere was carved by human hands. The sphere was found by archaeologist Sam Osmanagic in forests close to the village of Podubrovj. He's spent a lot of time studying stone spheres and says that this one is the largest in Europe. Sam has no doubt that the stones are human-made and refers to them as a prehistoric phenomenon. He thinks that dozens of the spheres were created across the Balkans by an advanced civilization that left no other historical record behind. Many scientists disagree. They think it's more likely that this sphere and others like it are examples of concretion, which happens when natural minerals cement themselves between sediment grains and create spherical shapes. Weathering then smooths the sides of the sphere over millions of years. We don't know who's wrong and who's right here, but we know it's a surprising thing to see in the middle of a forest. Somehow, more than 20,000 prehistoric cave paintings went undiscovered in the Amazonian rainforest until November 2020. The scale of the work is incredible, with paintings covering the side of a natural rock face in Colombia that stretches on for eight miles. Archaeologists have taken to calling it the prehistoric equivalent of the Sistine Chapel, but that doesn't do it justice. The Sistine Chapel is nowhere near as big as this. Experts believe that the artwork is about 12,500 years old. The subject matter of the paintings include animals that are now extinct, like the Mastodon and the Paleolama, which was a member of the camel family. Studying and cataloging the paintings is a process that's likely to take decades, but will hopefully give us an insight into a civilization that disappeared long ago. Mystifyingly, some of the paintings are so high up on the wall that they can only be seen by flying drones up to capture footage of them. How these ancient people were able to reach that height to create the paintings is unknown. It also seems that the artists left their handprints on the rock, perhaps as a kind of signature. Our next find isn't actually one that was discovered inside a forest. Instead, it's a forest itself. We're talking about the Petrified Forest National Park in Holbrook, Arizona, USA. The park features the biggest collection of petrified wood and trees in the world, and also contains incredibly rare and valuable fossils, some of which are 200 million years old. So much time has passed since the trees grew that they've now turned to stone. The park is enormous, covering 150 square miles, and touching on the edge of the Painted Desert. Scientists say that back in the Mesozoic era, the forest's location was close to the equator in the middle of the supercontinent called Pangaea. It would have enjoyed a subtropical climate, thus explaining why there were so many trees in a part of the world that's now a dry desert. It's a place on Earth like no other, and attracts a lot of wild campers even though camping in the petrified forest is legally prohibited. Instead, visitors are asked to stay in the nearby hotels, and only enter the forest as part of an approved guided tour. When a wooden chest stamped with a word and logo associated with the Nazis was discovered in the forests of Adygea, Russia in late 2016, archaeologists initially feared the worst. That's because the word stamped on the box was Ananaba, and the box was discovered to be full of skulls when it was opened. The Ananaba was a German study group set up by Adolf Hitler in 1935 and tasked with researching the history of ancient Germany and the heritage of its people. Members of the group spent their time examining historical sites, but also took an interest in areas related to the occult. 
It's thought that they might have had an interest in eugenics. Fortunately, it didn't take long to prove that the skulls inside the box weren't human. Instead, they're buffalo skulls. Closer examination of the skulls later revealed them to come from Azerbaijan. Why animal skulls would end up inside a box that belonged to a group interested in studying human history in Germany is unknown, but it might have something to do with that interest in the occult we mentioned a moment ago. The group remained active until 1945. Now we move from Russia to England to check out an ancient burial site and monument that was discovered in the New Forest region of Hampshire in October 2018. The archaeologists responsible for the discovery had chosen their dig site in the hope that they'd find a Bronze Age barrow, but that's not what was waiting for them beneath the ground. Instead, they found four cremation burial urns and a small monument, all of which are around 3,000 years old. They also found some flint tools, but the tools are likely to be 2,000 years older than the urns and unrelated to the burial. The most likely explanation is that there was a Neolithic-era monument here, and then the site was reused as a Bronze Age memorial site. The archaeologists didn't find a barrow mound or any other burial activity, and now think that the barrow might have been destroyed by farming activity over the centuries. But their surprise discovery means that they didn't leave the site disappointed with their work. Until quite recently, it was believed that the Amazon rainforest was almost totally uninhabited before the arrival of Europeans. But as of 2018, we know that's nonsense. An ongoing study of previously unexplored areas within the rainforest has revealed the presence of no fewer than 81 ancient settlements, and some experts believe that the settlements might have been home to more than one million people. These discoveries were made possible by breakthroughs in satellite image technology. Most of the settlements are in the upper Tapajos Basin of the Amazon, which is still largely uncharted. Some of them are tiny villages, but others are as large as 20 hectares in size. In the images, we can see ditches around the edges of the settlements, earthen platforms, and sunken roads. Archaeologists have managed to reach some of the sites on foot and found ancient ceramics and polished stone axes. The ceramics were dated to the early 15th century. We don't know what happened to all of these people, but sadly it's quite likely that they were wiped out by diseases introduced to the area by European settlers, to which they would have had no immunity. It isn't just the Amazon rainforest that's been giving up ancient settlements in the past few years. In 2014, archaeologists found two previously unknown ancient Mayan cities hiding in the Mexican jungle. The larger of the two cities is a truly awesome site, complete with pyramid temples, a palace, a gateway shaped like a monstrous human mouth, and a large ball court. Finding the cities was made easier by photos taken from the skies above central Yucatan in Campeche. The style of the architecture in both cities is typical of the Mayan Classic period, which means they were likely built between the 7th and 11th centuries. That's backed up by a hieroglyphic inscription on one of the city's many stone altars, which refers to the specific date of 29th November in the year 711. The larger city has been named Lagunita, and the smaller is now known as Tamchen. There are some signs that there was life at Tamchen long before the most recent city was built there, as archaeologists have found older ruined buildings that might go back as far as 2,300 years. We're not done with lost cities being found in the forest yet. In March 2015, the long-abandoned home city of an unknown culture was discovered in the rainforest of Honduras. The team that found the city had gone to Honduras in search of the legendary White City which is also known as the City of the Monkey God and is widely thought to be mythical. They don't think their discovery is the fabled White City, but in many ways it's even better. Their city is full of ancient plazas, mounds, stone statues, earthworks, and even an earthen pyramid, all of which were created well over 1,000 years ago. 
This is not the work of the Mayans, and according to the most trusted experts on Mesoamerican history, it's not the work of any other culture we've encountered before either. One of their statues depicts a human-like figure with the head of a jaguar topped with a helmet, perhaps representing a shaman. The precise location of the city has not been disclosed in the hope that keeping it quiet will also keep it safe from looters. At some point during the 14th century, a battle raged on a forested mountain close to Sanok in Poland. We know this because in August 2020, archaeologists found more than 200 arrows left over from the conflict on the forest floor. It's thought that the arrows come from the time of Casimir the Great during the 1300s. There was a fortified settlement here during the Middle Ages, but the settlement is long gone, and so is almost all trace of it. There was probably once more to be found here than the professional archaeologists were able to locate. The attention of the professionals was drawn to the site by large numbers of amateur metal detectorists flocking to the area in a short space of time which suggests there was something worth going to see. We'll probably never know what was removed from the forest by the amateurs before the professionals arrived at the scene. There's no historical record of a battle taking place in the forest during the 14th century, but it was a time of great unrest between the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, with frequent conflicts between the two. For centuries, the precise location of the Battle of Teutonborg Forest was unknown. That changed in 2016, when the discovery of Roman gold coins in the forest confirmed the presence of soldiers. The first century battle is significant because it saw the Roman army fall to one of the most total, humiliating defeats in the empire's long history. Varus, the head general of Emperor Augustus, lost a whole three legions to Germanic tribes during the battle in the year 9, and the scale of the defeat ultimately meant that the Romans abandoned their plans to expand their territory further across the Rhine River. According to the records of the historian Suetonius, more than 18,000 Roman soldiers were killed, and Augustus was so distraught that when he heard the news, he repeatedly banged his head against a table and shouted, Quinctilius Varus, give me back my legions. The location has been revealed to be Calcraisa, which is now in Lower Saxony. Sixteen Augustus-era gold coins have been found at the site, scattered across the ground and probably dropped by an officer trying to run away from the massacre. Perhaps the most surprising discovery in this whole video is that of a near 30-foot-long whale that was discovered on an island within the Brazilian part of the Amazon jungle in February 2019. The creature was found dead more than 50 feet from the shore, lying among the undergrowth. Scientists aren't totally sure how it got there, but they've made a few educated guesses. Most of those guesses rely on the idea of the creature being dead long before it got stuck in the jungle. The whale was a pup, no more than a year old, and may have either been caught by surprise by a strong tide or died after accidentally swallowing marine plastics. The tide would then have carried its body inland before eventually depositing it on the mangrove. Another theory is that the stress of being separated from its mother might simply have caused the whale to become lost, although it's unlikely it would or even could swim this far on its own even if it were lost. February is an unusual time of year for humpback whale sightings of any kind in Brazil, so it's no surprise the experts were left so perplexed. There have always been myths and legends about a long-lost race of giant humans in Ecuador, just as there have been ancient stories about giants in almost every other part of the world. In 2013, archaeologist Bruce Fenton claimed to have found a lost city created by giants deep in the Ecuadorian jungle. Fenton's discovery is that of an enormous pyramid, some 260 feet tall and 260 feet wide at the base, built from thousands of two-ton blocks of stone that are evenly cut and evenly spaced. 
Fenton also says that he found huge tools in the area, too large to have been wielded by regular humans. Scientists have tried to dismiss the discovery by claiming the pyramid is nothing but a natural rock formation, but that wouldn't explain the circles cut through the middle of some of the stones. Is there a more rational explanation, though? Some archaeologists think that rather than this being a city of giants, it's the mausoleum of Atahualpa, the last emperor of the Inca. He was captured and executed by the Spanish, but legends say that his body was returned to his people, and he was buried in a secret location surrounded by mountains of gold. Maybe all that gold is still there inside the pyramid. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!